So good afternoon everyone and welcome. Welcome to our Wednesday midday service. Uh, just quickly, uh, sorry, also welcome to you joining us from home. Hopefully you can hear me this week, unlike a fortnight ago when I think it was silent throughout. Sorry about that. Uh, before we begin, just a few uh, quick notices. Um, the first one is to say that next week um, the floor is being sealed, the stone floor is being sealed in the cafe area. So the cafe won't be open at all next week. Um, but the Wednesday midday service, this service will still happen, um, but you'll just access through that fire door at the back there. It'll be in and out through this door here. So the service will still be on, but I'm really sorry, there's no cafe beforehand. You can't come and get a coffee beforehand. Um, or afterwards, uh, and that's for the but the cafe will be closed for the whole week. Uh, so just to say that, uh, and then the second one is to say that over the course of the summer, as a church, we're running a number of connect events, what we're calling connect events, um, walks in the forest. But there's a book club, there's a, a few other bits and bobs going on. There's going to be a coffee afternoon. Um, if you would like to find out the details of those, they're being published in our news sheet, uh, which comes out by email every week. If you don't receive that and you'd like to, please just speak to the church office. Um, and they can get get you the details. So we we come to Wednesday, the middle of the week, and uh, we use this service as an opportunity just to pause, to uh, allow ourselves to uh, become aware afresh of God's presence with us, to to bring uh, the the needs that we're carrying for ourselves and for our families, our community, our world. Um, but also to lift our eyes to uh, look again at his face and to receive afresh from him his grace, his mercy, his love, so that we could go out and share it uh, with the people that we will meet through the rest of the week. So as we uh, come to our service, um, it's all running off the, the service sheet, which is available on our website if you don't already have it. Uh, just before we get into that, let's just take a moment to, to, to just be still before God, and then I'll lead us in a short prayer. So gracious Heavenly Father, as we gather we pray, would you give us diligence to seek you and wisdom to find you today? May our ears hear your voice, our eyes see your goodness, and our tongues proclaim your name as we commit our lives afresh to following, worshipping and glorifying you. Amen. So grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and also with you. I'm just going to read a few verses from Psalm, Psalm 36. And the psalmist writes this. Your love, Lord, reaches to the heavens, your faithfulness to the skies. Your righteousness is like the highest mountains, your justice like the great deep. You, Lord, preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast in the abundance of your house. You give them drink from your river of delights, for with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. I just wanted to, to begin really our service with those words. I've, I've been particularly struck just over the last week or so about this, the psalmist drawing on these, these images to talk about the, the permanence and the vastness, the abundance of God's faithfulness his righteousness, his justice, that if you like, goes beyond what we can we can see. We can never see the end of it. We can never reach the end of it. And in a world that seems often short of justice, short of grace, short of love, it is good for us to remind ourselves that in God there is 
no end. And it outlasts all things. So, as we pick up our service sheet, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And we pray together. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world, and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. I think Malcolm's lent me his, the frog in his throat. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, Jesus says, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and in faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And let's all receive today the assurance of God's forgiveness and love. So may the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image, to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song we will praise our God. So uh, I'm going to lead uh, us in a, a song. This is a prayer, really. Um, breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life in you. This has been one of the um, words we've had. We've had a sense of God saying to us as a church over the last month is to uh, to be drawing on that deep well of the breath of God, the Holy Spirit, to fill us and equip us. And so this is a, a prayer to receive that breath and um, if you'd like to feel free to stand but you don't have to um, hum along if you know tune sing along at home if you can and um, but otherwise let's just allow these words to pick them up and use them as a prayer in your own heart breathe on me breath of God Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, breath of God, until my heart is pure. Until with thee I will, one will, to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, till I am wholly thine. Until this earthly part of me glows with thy fire divine. Breathe on me, breath of God, so shall I never die. But live with thee the perfect life of thine eternity. Amen. We pray, breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your life anew. Amen.
Amen. Do please take a seat. So as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Uh, For our scripture reading today, I'm just going to take some verses from Romans chapter 15. So we're in the middle of a a series uh, looking at the one another's of scripture, how we are called to uh, relate, engage with one another as followers of Jesus. And so I'm going to start Romans chapter 15, verse 1. And Paul writes this. We who are strong ought to bear with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbours for their good, to build them up. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the insults of those who insult you have fallen on me. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the endurance taught in the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind toward each other that Christ Jesus had so that with one mind and one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Accept one another, then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Accept one another, then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. I wonder, when did you first meet Jesus for yourself? When, did, when were you first aware of that personal encounter with the living, risen Lord Jesus, have, do, you, do you have a sense of, have you met personally the risen Lord Jesus? Paul encourages us to accept one another just as Jesus accepted us. So how did Jesus accept us? Well, a little earlier in this letter that Paul was writing to the Christians in Rome, Paul wrote this, and I think he had it in mind when he wrote that sentence that I've just read. Paul writes to these Christians and says, For if, while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more? Having been reconciled, shall we be saved through his life? I think there are a number of things about the way that Jesus accepts us, but perhaps the first and foremost of all of them is that Christ accepted us while we were still his enemies, while we were still opposed to him. For many of us, that first encounter with Jesus may well have come at a point where Our hearts were softened, our hearts were broken towards God, where we recognised that we needed him in our lives. But that wasn't the point where Jesus first accepted us. Jesus accepted us before then, before that point where we became inclined to turn towards him. Jesus accepted us while we were still living in opposition to him. He died for us, for you, for me, so that we might find that reconciliation. We might be able to turn, to receive his grace, to 
as we have already done, to, to repent of our sins, in both in penitence and in faith, that there is forgiveness available for us through the washing of his blood. I don't know about you, uh, but I long for the day where it's only my out and out enemies that I struggle to accept. If I am honest with myself, I know that I struggle to live up to Christ's example, not just in loving my enemies, those who are living in active opposition to me, but I struggle to accept people who I have quite a lot in common with, but there's just, I don't know, maybe this is just me, but there are just, sometimes there, is a, there's, there are things that they might do that hurt me or upset me that seem very insensitive or I might struggle to accept one because someone because they've been thoughtless or careless towards somebody that I love and I know in those moments I I can struggle I've been wrestling this last week with someone in particular it's been on my heart I found it quite hard <laughs> to prepare on this passage because I knew in my heart I was quite angry towards that person and they weren't even my enemy. They had just done what is in the grand scheme of things, a relatively small thing, but had really gotten under my skin. You know, do you know that feeling where something's just gotten into your head and it's buzzing around like a wasp and it's angry and you just carry this sense of tension. And I came to this passage and it says, accept one another just as Christ accepted you. And I thought, God, I, I'm struggling to accept this person who is my, my, my brother in Christ. They, we have the same father and I am really struggling to accept them. I feel quite resentful. And I had to really, I had to bring that before God and say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for holding on to that. Because you didn't hold it against me. You in love came to me. In that moment where I was trying to do everything to push you away and you reached out to me in love. Because that's the other thing I think about uh, how Jesus accepts us. God throughout scripture as we read the incredible story of God's love expressed towards us. His loving purposes to his people, his creation of redemption, of, of reaching out after his creation, after we had turned away in the Garden of Eden and, and gone our own way and said, we know better. God re has relentlessly pursued us through the corridors of history. And we read about that in this book. God is always taking the initiative. He always moves towards us first before we even have a sense of it, before we know anything about it. We're, we're going to be in a few weeks, hopefully, having a, uh, our first christening in the church after the COVID pandemic. And one of the beautiful things about baptising an infant child is that they have no idea what's going on. But isn't that how God's grace works in all of our lives? We are so often ignorant of what God is doing in us. And it's only afterwards when we look back and we say, oh God, you met me in that place. You met me through those people. You showed your grace to me and your mercy to me through that situation or it's always, we, we are always catching up with what the Spirit of God is doing in our lives. And it's like that with the way he accepts us. He takes the initiative. Jesus moved first. He stepped down from heaven, became a human being, lived among us, showed us what relationship with God is really meant to be like, and went to the cross for us. I think in, in my own life, again, I can only speak out of my own brokenness. I'm so, I so often find myself in this attitude of, well, I'll accept them when they accept me. When they turn around first, then fine, we'll, we'll make peace. You know, when they show any inclination that they're interested in, in uh, restoring a relationship with me, or when they're interested in building a relationship with me, then, then I'll respond. I'll be willing then. But that's not how we're being called to love as Christians. It's not how we're being called to live. Yes, there are, our lives are very complicated and relationships can be very deeply broken. And it's never about sweeping anything under the carpet. It's never about pretending everything's okay and like things didn't happen. They did. 
and God knows that. But we are called by the grace of God and in his strength to, even if it's a small step, to take a step in the direction of offering acceptance to one another. Because it's the, the, just the final thing is that it's um, the way that Jesus accepts us isn't in ignorance or um, it's, it's not pretending that, that we are not who we are. It's in the full knowledge of who we are. When Jesus accepted me, he knew the depths of my brokenness and my sin. It, he wasn't coming to accept me to pretend that I was perfect or that I wasn't going to make all the mistakes I've made in my life and all the ones that are to come that he knows and I don't know about yet. He came and accepted me in full knowledge of who I am. Uh, I've been uh, with a, a few couples. I've been um, taking them through the uh, marriage preparation course. These are couples engaged, hoping to get married over the summer, restrictions permitting. And we've just had the session on conflict, conflict in relationships. And, and there was a really profound um, sentence that one of the couples who was being interviewed shared. And they said, the thing about, um, about processing conflict in relationship is um, they used obviously the example of their marriage and they said it's like there's a person in your life who knows the deepest, darkest parts of your heart and can find the place to accept you and to forgive you and to love you and to live alongside you. And for all of us, regardless of our current, past or future relationship status, all of us have that person in Jesus. In fact, Jesus knows me and the darkness of my heart even better than my wife, who knows me probably better than anyone else. He knows all about me, and yet he chose to take the initiative and come in love while I was still his enemy. He doesn't sweep it under the carpet. He came to provide a way for me to receive forgiveness for the things I did wrong, for a way for me to be restored in relationship to him. Not pretending it wasn't real, not pretending it didn't happen. Repentance is still really important. It's the key. But he came to make a way. He committed to the costly path of forgiveness. And this kind of acceptance, I think, is one of the ways that the church is called to live prophetically in our society. Because that's not actually the kind of acceptance that our society models our society wants to um, deny disagreement. It wants to sweep away difference and say, well, we all really think the same thing so we can accept one another because we're just going to unconditionally affirm everything about everyone else, even if they are profoundly different to us. But we're called to this, this countercultural kind of acceptance where we look at someone and say, yes, we are fundamentally opposed and I feel like you're attacking me, but I'm going to choose to reach out in love, to accept that you are a child of God as much as me. And I'm going to reach out and try and make peace with you. I'm going to try and live alongside you in a way that reveals God's love, his presence and his glory. And it takes, in, as we heard earlier in the passage, it takes endurance. We need encouragement. We need to be built up in the spirit but it's all with the purpose of glorifying God, of pointing people to him, that they might look at our lives and say, how is it that you can do that? How is it that you can reach out to somebody who is acting aggressively or violently towards you, someone who's acting, who's trying to, to criticize you or take you down, cut you down? How can you respond in the way that you do? And we can say only because of Jesus, only because I know that he lives and he's with me. So accept one another then, just as Christ accepted you, in order to bring praise to God. We can't do it on our own. And we will always do it imperfectly. And there will be situations that feel too big for us, that will take some time, and that we work to, and we work on. And that's okay too, because of Jesus, and because of what he has done for us. 
So why don't we just take a moment's pause now? Perhaps as I've been speaking that um, a person or a situation has come to your mind of someone who um, you're really struggling with at the moment. And as I said, these things can't always be fixed in a moment. But perhaps just the first step is to recognise that person's presence in your thoughts, in your in your heart, in the the the, the anger or the, the fear or the shame or the hurt, and just to acknowledge that before God. And say, Lord, help me. I want to follow you. I want to live the way that Jesus lived. I want to model myself on him. Give me the diligence to seek you in this situation and the wisdom to find you. Because Lord, we know that you are there in the midst, in the confusion and in in the hurt and the pain. Help us to find you. And give us the strength, or give me the strength, the faith, to take even just one tiny, small step to follow Jesus' example. Amen. So, gathering our prayers into one, let us, uh, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And let's pray together for the help of the Holy Spirit. So be with us, Spirit of God. Nothing can separate us from your love. Breathe on us, breath of God. Fill us with your saving and sanctifying power. Speak to us, wisdom of God. Bring strength healing and peace come upon us fire from heaven send us out with love and courage the lord is here his spirit is with us we proclaim not ourselves but jesus christ as lord and ourselves as your servants for jesus sake So as we continue to reflect on how to live out Jesus' example in our lives, let's affirm our commitment to following him. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in prayer? With the help of God, we will. Will you persevere in resisting evil and whenever you fall into sin, repent and turn to the Lord? With the help of God, we will. Will you proclaim by word and example the gospel of Christ? With the help of God, we will. Will you serve others and love your neighbour as yourself? With the help of God, we will. Will you seek to fully obey the Holy Spirit on all occasions? With the help of God, we will. Will you defend the weak and seek peace and justice? With the help of God, we will. Will you pursue a life saturated with God? With the help of God, we will. It is one of the wonders of God's mercy and grace that to all of these questions we can answer with the help of God. It's only by his help. So let's just take one more one more moment of just quiet let's just 
receive that help breathe in the breath of God all of us live imperfectly as disciples but bit by bit day by day we know and trust that by his spirit God is transforming and redeeming and renewing us as we turn to him So may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Thank you so much for joining with us this week. Um, just a quick reminder, um, the cafe is closed all of next week, but the service will still take place in this room. Um, so you can enter and exit through that door at the back. Um, we look forward to seeing you next week. Take care.